Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Jill Haney and I have been privileged to be able to help develop this box that you see here, the Go Welcome Newcomers program uh, here at Saddleback Education. We had so much fun when we created this product because we really wanted to create it um, for the needs of today's tween newcomers. When we're talking about tweens, we're talking about um, our students who are ages 10 to 14 and who have just entered the country uh, and are really having to learn all of the different aspects of American culture, not just day-to-day -day life, but also in school, uh, in the transportation systems, all through the currency, everything that is involved with day-to-day -day life in the United States. And as we thought about this and started talking with teachers, we really started thinking about what are the most critical topics that our um, newcomers are going to really need to survive. And so in this box, we're going to see some of those topics and how we really wanted to present them to the students. Now, as I open the box, what you're gonna see right away is that it is really full with books. And if I take off this top, now notice there's a little something special in this top as well, uh, which we will get to shortly, our vocabulary cards. But we notice that it is just jam-packed with different books. And these books represent 14 different topics that are critical to newcomers. So I can pull right here a set of books and we see that this is what we call our school expectations books. And I have three different copies of this book. Uh, in fact, I have that for every title in this box because as we started to develop this and think about, okay, how is it gonna really support our newcomers? One of the things that we wanted to make sure happened was that it could be taught in small groups and that meant a book for every student. So we have three copies of every book ready to go in the big box, and then you can actually buy additional books. So let's say your groups in your school are um, four or five in a group, you can buy additional book sets so that you can accommodate that. Now, let's take a closer look. So here we have this school expectations book. Obviously, a very important uh, topic for survival in the U.S. is understanding the expectations, the rules, uh, and also both the written and unwritten rules at a U.S. school. And that's really what is tackled in this book. Now, if we open it up, we start to see why this is specifically for between newcomers. First of all, every single spread has photos to support it. And so these are mature in terms of middle schoolers. It doesn't look like a baby book. And yet the text itself, there's just a little bit on each page and it is very manageable in terms of shorter sentences, easy to read. In fact, for readability, this particular box is right at that first grade readability. The books in here are gonna range anywhere from middle of first grade to the end of first grade in terms of readability. Lexiles are going to fall into really the 100s, low 200s. So as I'm looking at these block books, in addition to the photos on every page, one of the nice features is that when a new vocabulary word is introduced that is related to that topic, I then have a definition box right on the same spread. This is wonderful because what we have then is a great deal of support for new vocabulary in these books. In fact, every one of these topics is gonna to feature 10 survival vocabulary words, and they will introduce them within the context of the book. They'll have those definition text boxes to support them on the page. The word itself will be bolded the first time it's used. And then if we look in the back of the book, uh, we will see that there's also a glossary. 
Now, the important thing is, is that this is not the only encounter with these 10 words that students will have, because we also have a fiction pair for each of these topics. So we just looked at the School Expectations nonfiction book, and now we see there's a fiction book that goes with it that features tween newcomers as the main characters. And every one of the fiction books that is in here will be paired with a nonfiction topic and will feature a tween or multiple tween main characters. And they will be newcomers from some country in the world. Now, we wanted to make sure that we represented diversity in these books, so our tween main characters may come from every different continent, I think except for Antarctica, and they have varied experiences. You know, when we think about today's classroom and today's um, newcomer classrooms, the thing that I see over and over again is how diverse these classrooms are. Not only diverse in terms of languages, but also diverse in terms of the backgrounds of the students, both their family backgrounds and also what I would call their experiential backgrounds. What have they actually experienced in their life prior to coming to the US? For some of them, it has been a lot of violence, war. They may have spent more years in a refugee camp than they have in a home. They may never have gone to school. Others may have had quite a bit of schooling and even preparation in English before coming to the US. So we have this huge diversity of languages, of backgrounds, of experiences, and we have to make it all work in one newcomer classroom. So we really wanted these fiction books to show that same sort of diversity in terms of different characters, both male and female, from different countries with different backgrounds, different family structures, but experiencing the topic that they are uh, paired with, so in this case, school expectations, experiencing that topic uh, in a real world setting. So here we have um, actually twins uh, who have come to the US and are trying to figure out how to do okay and well in school and really struggling with some of the expectations and we see them in their day-to-day -day life. Now, when we open it up, right away we notice that support continues. We have photos on every single spread. What I love about photos is that they are real. They are wonderful, wonderful tools for teaching our newcomers about vocabulary and for helping them to comprehend the text. So you have, because you have photos on every single spread, you have the ability to really do a photo walk of these books. So for your newcomers who have not acquired any English, you could be doing a photo walk and really working on uh, key phrases, vocabulary. For your newcomers who are ready for text, you've got accessible text here in the first grade readability. You can have them reading with support and guidance. And, and we have audio that can be purchased separately so you can also have an audio of the book, the full narration of the book with male and female narrators that can further support a newcomer. Interestingly, when we look into this fiction book, we're gonna notice that those same 10 vocabulary words that we saw in the nonfiction book are featured again, and they are bolded again in the fiction, and the definition is there in a text box with the fiction. And when we look in the back, we're going to see that those words are also in the glossary. So we have extensive vocabulary support with these books. Now, I love talking about how many different topics there are. 14 different topics, three copies of each book, and a nonfiction and fiction book in every topic pair. So we have 84 books in this box. And as we look at some of these topics, look at how varied they are. So here we have exploring your future. Here we have money basics, looking at currency in the US. Here we have sports and activities. So we've got recreation covered as well. Here we have grooming. So we have personal care 
included and how important it is to know some of the American grooming expectations. And if I turn this box around, we'll see a quick look at all of the 14 topics along with the covers of their nonfiction and fiction books. So you can see we've got American culture, we've got community and health, we've got um, exploring your future, we've got food and meals, grooming, money basics, safety, school basics, school expectations, school success, so a lot of focus on helping them to do well in school, which is of course, as we know, critical for those upper elementary and middle school newcomers to adapt quickly at school. Then we have social skills, we have sports and activities, transportation, and weather and natural disasters. So you can see we have quite a wide variety of topics, but all of these were things that were mentioned by um, teachers as we started to ask the question and we're thinking about developing this product, what is critical for your newcomers to know? Now, if I turn this back around, one of the things that teachers really emphasized to us was how important it is to have the vocabulary support. So we've seen how much support is in the books. In addition, we have this vocabulary box, and when we open it up, we're gonna see that we have a vocabulary card for every one of those 140 words. 10 words per topic with the 14 topics. And each of these cards has a full color photo on one side and the word and definition on the other. Now you'll notice that if I get further into this box, the colors are actually different with different cards. And those colors are actually a great way to help you kind of organize your books. So you'll see here, for example, that if I turn a book over, it also has a color on the back. And when we are looking for the vocabulary that matches a particular book, we are looking to match that color on the back of the book to the color on the card. Now, when we think about these vocabulary cards, some of these words are very abstract. So I might take a look here and we have the word casual. Well, casual, how do we come to understand what casual means? We can certainly show someone in casual dress. We can talk about how it's ordinary, not formal uh, or fancy, and that oftentimes in American culture, casual dress is very much acceptable and in many cases even kind of expected. But we can also see that there are going to be some words that are very concrete, like visa, where we can say, okay, what is a visa? We can actually show a picture of a visa and talk about that as a concrete object. And then we have some words like culture that are incredibly abstract. So how do we show that? Well, you'll notice on the back of culture, you've got four different photos to try and show that array um, that can be the, a nation's culture, from their foods, to their music, to their celebrations. All of these things are involved in a nation's culture. So you've got 140 vocabulary survival cards. You have the 84 books with the 14 topics, but that's not all. If we open our box one more time, we see we also have an incredible teacher's guide with instructional support. Now this teacher's guide was really developed with the idea of being as helpful to teachers as possible and providing all sorts of support. So when I open it up, I'm gonna see that I have some background information about the, top, the, the product. I have some research here that I can use as I am talking about why it's important to do this particular um, solution and why we have certain aspects within this built in. And then I get to this page. This is the book overview chart. The book overview chart gives me every single title and it also tells me what the readability and word count is of each book. Because I have a wide variety of readabilities in this box, one of the things that's important is that I wanna be able to pinpoint 
what each individual book's readability and lexile is, and that's where I can turn to this chart. Now, there is a real beauty to this solution in that you are not dictated by what order you use these topics. You can go in any order that makes the most sense for your classroom and for your newcomers. So in that respect, one of the things that you can do on this overview chart is really at a glance, be thinking about, okay, what topic do I wanna start with? What is most critical to my tween newcomers? Many of our teachers choose to start the school year with school basics and school expectations. Uh, but again, that is completely up to you in terms of what makes the most sense. It also means that if you are already teaching uh, thematically, you can look for the topics that are gonna fit with your themes and easily integrate them. Because again, the order is totally up to you. Now, as we keep looking further into the teacher's guide, we're gonna see that here we actually have some really cool strategies that are helpful when we need to adapt the uh, product or adapt the curriculum. Uh, to help our newcomers who may need some extra support. So we have uh, vocabulary strategies, comprehension strategies, and fluency strategies that are suggested. Then we have uh, assessment support in the form of a program progress chart, and that allows us to do daily progress monitoring. And then we turn and discover we have a great deal of support for every single topic. So if I take a look here, I'll see that the first page of each uh, set for, a teacher, for the teacher's guide is going to be some background information about the topic. It's gonna help the teacher really understand, okay, why is this topic included? Why is it important? What are the books that are included? What are some suggested instructional resources to add? And then as I turn the page, I realize I've got a full lesson plan here to be able to teach the topic that goes into activating background knowledge and provides uh, ideas for whole class, small group, and paired reading activity and paired activities. And then I've got a whole page of vocabulary instruction activities that incorporate those same 10 words that were in the books and on the cards and now has some uh, instructional strategies to work with. And then I've got guided reading questions so I can really delve into the comprehension of both the nonfiction and the fiction books. And these questions are gonna be a variety of questions. Some are gonna be very direct uh, kinds of questions that have concrete answers. Others are gonna be higher order thinking questions or personal uh, reaction kinds of questions that help students make personal connections to the text. Now, as I go further, I'm gonna see that there are activity sheets. Many of these involve graphic organizers. They help the students organize the information that they have been learning in the books. There will be one that is a general topic, then there'll be one that's focused on the nonfiction, and one that is focused on the fiction. And many of these activity sheets will include photos from the books as well. And then finally, every single topic has a quiz, and that quiz is going to include multiple choice and vocabulary questions so that you can have that summative assessment at the end of any particular unit. So think for a moment about all the things we have looked at in our uh, time here today, that you have an array of books 84 in total. You have instructional support that coordinates all of those different 14 topics, both the nonfiction and fiction, and you have 140 vocabulary words. Also with the teacher's guide, you have it all on CD. So if you want a digital version of any of the activities, those are provided as part of the box. So what you see here in Go Welcome Newcomers is uh, really meant to be the solution that you can use to really supplement any newcomer classroom uh, that is for upper elementary, middle school students, where they're gonna be able to see themselves in these books and to really explore 14 topics that are critical 
to their survival and that will help them thrive uh, as new comers to the United States. I thank you for your time today. I hope this was helpful as you got to know a little bit more about the product. And again, Saddleback Education is always happy to help on our website, uh, saddleback.com, sdlback.com. Uh, and our customer service folks are always ready to answer questions. Thank you, have a great day.